everybody. What's going on? Happy Wednesday, you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I see you guys in my chat. Um, this is going to be another fantastic show today. I have my buddy Nick Sylvester here in the studio with me today. We're going to be talking about the big three today. That's Dogman, Werewolves, and Sasquatch and their potential ties to government. Okay. And, uh, and so much more. We have, we have so much to talk about, uh, today. So if you guys would like to follow along with all of my shows and keep up with what I'm doing, cause I'm doing a whole bunch right now. Uh, you guys go check out my website. That's the cryptid huntress.com. Um, that is, uh, yeah, that's the best way to get in touch with me. If you guys would like to shoot me a message. Okay. Uh, also I do have a Patreon and that is the cryptid huntress over on Patreon. If you guys would like to support what I'm doing, and I got that shop. It's called War Woman Goods, okay, over on Etsy, where you can buy some jewelry, and it helps support the cause over here at the channel. All right. Also, before we start today, I want to give a huge thank you to my friends. I've got Midwest Night Watchers and uh, Chiro Sounds, Chiro Sounds. We got Jane and Geralt. Thank you guys so much for all these stickers y'all sent me. And to Dennis Carroll. I don't know if Dennis is in here or not. I got like a whole package full of wonderful stickers from you guys, uh, including Nighthawk High Strangeness as well. So thank you guys so much for that. And Candy. If Candy's in the chat today, thank you so much for all my artwork. Oh my God. You, she gave me a three, she made a 3D pop-up Bigfoot UFO card for me, you guys. Look, check this out. Oh, it's so awesome. Okay, so, and my Halloween art. So, Candy, thank you so much. If you're not in here right now, I hope you'll go back and watch this. Um, and so, I just wanted to give you a huge thank you. And I'm going to be sending all you guys some Cryptid Huntred, Huntress merch, okay? Uh, any, anybody who's nice enough to send me stuff, I'm going to send y'all some stuff back, okay? Including some stickers. I'm going to put my stickers up on my website if you guys want to purchase one. Uh, and they all, they go out to my Patreon members. So if you guys want to become a member of my Patreon, you guys go do that today. Okay. Awesome, y'all. Okay. Well, um, let's see. Let's. Oh, by the way, we have a fantastic show tomorrow, too. I have Arkeem Ra coming on the show. He gave me a, an incredible blind target. It is an underground potentially a cloning facility under Davenport, Iowa. Okay. And, uh, and some cryptids, something that he may or may not have encountered there called a, a blimmy. Okay. So you guys, we're going to talk about blimmies tomorrow. And, uh, and for those of you who don't know, it's a headless humanoid. Okay. But their face is in their chest. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be a wild show. I, I keep it, I keep it funky over here at the Cryptid Hunters channel. Okay. Also, you guys can listen to me on podcast format now. All of my shows are up there. I'm about to release season 10 next week. Okay. So season 10 is coming up next week uh, where all of my, uh, I'll be up to date on all my shows will be up there on podcast format. Okay. Well, let's get this show on the road today. I have Nick Sylvester here. Um, okay. Nick is a leader in the truther community. He hosts the bridge with Nick and Dylan discussing the cosmic, spiritual, and the nature of reality, bridging the known, in the unknown. And he's got a way bigger bio than that. I just gave the short version today. So please help me welcome to the show, Nick Sylvester. Hi, Jessica. And I prefer the short version, if not no version. I, I, I don't, um, the whole credentials, th that's the thing of the past. Usually yes. uh, what we're going to find in the world is the people with the most credentials are the gatekeepers that were set there by the cabal. They will know the least and they will lie the most. So I prefer just Nick's here. How you doing? Anyway, it's a pleasure to see you. I love talking to you. You know, we talk on the phone. Sometimes we text um, and you, you have a fantastic group that follow you. So I want to say hello to them too. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for being here, Nick. Uh, so much has gone on since the last time we talked. And the last time you came on my show, we talked about the Dogman Encrypted Breeding Program uh, in the United States. And that was quite the showstopper there. That's such a great topic. Um, since that show, Nick, uh, I was tasked with that as being my a blind remote viewing target. Okay. Unbeknownst mm. to me. I do. I did determine through that data. I do believe that is a real, um, a, a real program. I believe. I don't. It, it seemed as though yeah. it was still in progress. Actually, yeah. So um, I just wanted to give you that little update. Yeah. No. I mean, the the, the infrastructure is still there. Um, you know, the 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 
the dismantling of that particular um, facility was very, very recent. I mean, you know, everything is still there. Um, we're talking months. The dismantling in, in this particular one was the, the werewolf program. And there was a sister program that was the Dogman program. I and mean, they're very, very similar. Um, but, but yeah, just very, very recently, the activity, I believe, had been shut down by, by the White Hats. Either that or the, the bad guys decided to shut it down, burn everything down to, to cover the evidence. I don't know which, a little of both. It's hard to know. I mean, these are these are very very secretive, um, you know, situations. It's not like the normal guy is going to know about a lot of this stuff. So um, that that that's what I know on that. But but you know, I I, I want to, if you don't mind, I just wanted to kind of take a couple of minutes to, to let people, you know, sort of know from my perspective, you know, what what it is, you know, how 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 do cryptids and things like that fit into this this big this big picture you know cuz cuz what i do i mean what i'm involved in is i've always uh oh nick nick is frozen i believe let me make sure yeah i think nick is frozen nick can you hear me Okay, Nick just froze up, you guys. Let's see here. I'm just checking to make sure. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to make sure it's not my computer, you guys. Here, let me take Nick down. Nick, try to try to log out and then come back in, okay? And uh, let me take you down off the screen for just a minute. So in case you don't know, <laughs> Nick is frozen, you guys. So uh, hopefully he's going to log out. Yeah, he's logging out. He's coming back in. Okay. Yeah. Nick. Okay. Nick is a huge name in the truth movement, you guys. And, uh, and he has a really amazing show. It's called the bridge with Nick and Dylan. It's only on rumble. Okay. So you guys go check him out over on rumble. They talk about everything. If y'all remember it, he, he likes to talk about everything and does not, and there's, you know, on rumble, we don't have to have a filter. Okay. And that's why I like putting my shows over on rumble. Um, if you guys haven't found me on Rumble yet, I do have a channel there, and uh, and I have most of my shows uploaded there. I'm a little bit behind, okay? I'm about a week or two behind. Uh, but yeah, my shows are over there. You can pretty much talk without the censorship over there on Rumble, okay? So uh, y'all y'all be sure to to go check him out. And uh, yeah, I want to say hey to everybody in the chat too while we're waiting, okay? We got the Dogman UK man up in here too. Hey guys, okay, and uh, and I see I see Jane in here. Jane, thank you, I, and, and and Gerald too. I hope you guys heard me. Thank you all for your stickers today. Um, so yeah, so I'm just waiting for for, for my guest to come back in. So that's Nick. Uh, he he was having trouble getting in Streamyard. We use a, a program called Streamyard, and uh, and it doesn't really really go well with everybody's phones in their computer. So. Um, so we'll see what happens today. Um, but yeah, so he, he's got a lot of really good information. Uh, Nick, Nick gets a lot of it, what I would say like insider information on cryptids and that's how I met Nick. And so that's why, um, I really enjoy bringing him on the show. Um, and also usually after my remote viewing shows, a lot of times, uh, he'll contact me and he has given me confirmation that I was really on target with a lot of that stuff. Um, he's able to, he's able to, uh, to, he just knows some things. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Uh, and so I was going to actually bring that up with him today. Uh, potentially the, let's see what, the, the Bermuda Triangle was one of them. And uh, in those goggles with the, um, the interdimensional goggles that uh, you, where you can see, that, I guess they use them in Vietnam. Uh, Nick, Nick knows about those too a little bit. So he gave me some confirmation on those goggles as well. And Oh, and by the way, Nick was actually having a snowstorm, I believe, at his house, too. So that may be what what that just happened, what just happened there. Um, thank you, Dave Scott. I believe we have Dave Scott in the chat today. Thank you for that super chat, Dave. That is very sweet of you. If you guys uh, haven't checked out Space Out Radio on the weeknights, I know y'all are there on the weekends with me uh, it, off the trails on Space Out Radio. But, um, but Dave has a great show there every weeknight at midnight Eastern. 
9 Pacific um, at Spaced Out Radio. So you guys go check out Dave. And thank you, Dave. I appreciate you. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So Nick has a lot of good inside information on stuff. And uh, hold on. Let's see. Hold on one moment, you guys. Um, Nick is actually calling my phone. So hold on one second. Okay. All right, you guys. Sorry about that. I had to do a quick little commercial break there. Nick's uh, internet just went out because he's got, having a snowstorm over there. He lives in Washington, you guys, or somewhere up in the, the Pacific Northwest. And uh, he's having all sorts of stuff going on today. So uh, if nothing else, we're going to bring him back on my phone and we're just going to do a conversation where you guys can just look at my lovely face today if we have to. Oh my gosh, the horror. Okay. I'm just kidding. It is Halloween though. Okay. And, uh, and I hope you guys all have your, your Halloween costumes already ready to go. Okay. Thank you, Dave, for that super chat. I appreciate it. Okay. So yeah, so we're actually going to be talking about cryptids in the government. And I know we've talked about this a couple of times on my show, several times on my show. Um, now I do have um, some he has some more information uh, about the werewolf breeding programs. Okay. And, uh, and, and he's the one that came on. We talked about the, the dog man breeding programs. I did remote view that I did find out that it was real. Okay. I do believe it's real. Now I also have people who don't think it's real. Okay. Too, you know, I've also had like Vic Cundiff on the show as well. So, I mean, we're, we've got like a lot of information coming from different angles and, uh, and everybody's got an opinion on it. Um, you know, we also had that guy who calls himself Dwayne that came on our show and he, um, he claims that he is part of a dog man critter control team. Okay. And uh, now I don't know him personally, actually. So, um, you know, we, we have to take all this with a grain of salt. All right. And, uh, and as to whether it's, uh, if, you know, what, go with your gut, y'all. Go with your gut, okay, uh, on all this stuff. Because we are just ultimately trying to figure it all out. Um, okay, so by the way, I'm having a massive, amazing Halloween special show on Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm going to be airing a show with a very special guest. I am not going to announce who that is yet. Uh, but it is going to, um, it's going to be a big dog man show, okay? And I'm doing that on Halloween night. And, uh, and so I hope you guys will all be there around 9 p.m. Uh, on Halloween night. Okay, so you guys come join me. It's going to be the best. Okay, so I think what, well, until Nick comes back, so I think what he was, where he was going with this, uh, with what he was about to say, is that there is like a big picture to all of this. Okay, now what we do on this channel and what I do on all my shows is I look into the micro parts like the the cryptic community okay but you guys as y'all know is like a, the uh, awakening okay of humanity and all that kind of stuff and that's see nick talks about like the major like the uh the macro level i guess you call it right of um of of the cryptids and the awakening movement and the truth or community and all these other like the secret space program and all that kind of stuff uh the paranormal communities i mean we're all you know, he kind of bridges them all together. It's kind of like what I like to do as well. And uh, and so he sees like the big picture, all of this. And, uh, and yeah, I do focus on the cryptids. Okay. And that's what I do. Uh, it's because I'm a, a field researcher. I do believe that Nick is back. Uh, it's because I'm a field researcher. So I focus on that. But I, but like I always like to say, it's like what it, the little bit of information that we're giving out. Like I'm, I'm focusing on these dogmen, the blemies, blemies that I'm going to have on tomorrow, uh, all this stuff. But it's it's part of a bigger picture because we're we're getting some answers to a lot of this stuff. And here we have Nick back in the studio. Okay, we'll wow. See. How, how's it going? <laughs> wow, um, just everything everything shut down. Literally, my phone, my internet, my my camera, everything. It Unbelievable. Happens. It's it just happens. Like, it's so normal for me. Almost half the videos I'll do, I'll just have total shutdown. So it is frustrating. Anyway, so what were we talking about? <laughs> okay. 
so well, we were so I was just talking about so before we went live, we were talking about the the like the macro level and the micro level. Like I'm I'm doing this like cryptic community stuff and and I we're exploring all these mysteries. I'm doing these remote viewing targets of things that have been hidden from us for so long. Um, and, and so you, you have like a bigger picture of all of this, right? Well, and so okay. I was trying to explain that to the audience. So that, yeah, this, you know, there, there are a lot of groups. There are a lot of, a lot, a lot of groups and subgroups, you know, there's the, there's the cosmic community and there are a lot of subgroups in the cosmic community. There's a lot of cryptid groups that talk about different things. Um, you know, there's the geopolitical groups, the MAGA groups, the Patriot groups, the truther groups all talking, all specializing in different bits and pieces. But what is it we're all doing? What is it we all need to be doing? We need to be understanding what it is that's going on, understanding that the cabal that is taken over the governments of almost all countries, you know, things over the last six, seven, eight years, it's been a war. Most people don't know that but it has. So the cabal, I mean, I, I can, I could do a two hour dissertation about, you know, where they came from, you know, through the Khazarian mafia, um, up through the Jesuits, through the Freemasons, through the, the Illuminati, how the Satanist, you know, all, how all of that goes together, but that, that's a different show. Um, but yeah, I, I've heard there's but, a cryptid Illuminati. I'm not a member. <laughs> the, the, the cryptids are, are one specific tool, one specific uh, topic that the government, the, the cabal, has chosen to hide from us for a multitude of reasons, okay? Um, mainly because they invert and they utilize things on this planet for harm, right? Right. For, yes. for hurting people, for causing problems, for committing crimes, for, you know. Mm -hmm. So that is basically what's what's the cryptid, uh, you know, the, the cryptid groups have become. They become tools of the cabal, tools of oh, the drug wow. cartel, right? I agree tools, with that statement. All, and this is all over the world. And, you know, Jessica asked me uh, earlier, right now, there are, let's just say, well, I'm not, let's not say right now, because things are changing for the better. Let's say over the last decades, the government, our government, our three-letter agencies have been involved with 12 um, cryptid species, okay? Um, okay? And very involved in regards breeding, training, investigations. From what I understand through whistleblowers and insiders in this in this world is we this government has approximately 50 three-letter agencies that we don't even know about. You know, we know about a handful, right? Five or six, whatever. There's over 50. And all of these agencies work in these um in these realms, they work. The, one of their main re, their, their main reasons for existence is to keep things from you, to clean up messes, to make people go bye bye, to hush people, to scrub the internet, to hide the bodies. Do, do, do you understand? And you know, a lot of normies are just like, "Where's the proof? If these things exist." We know about it. They'd be on the news. You know, it's the most ridiculous thing I ever hear because I know what's behind the, the, the hiding of these beings. Okay. And, you know, you're talking about, I, I mean, I'm not an expert at all of them by any stretch, but Dogman, Werewolf, Bigfoot, yes. The crawler type creatures, um, you know, the, the Mothman type creatures, the Chupacabra type creatures the indigenous lizard people type creatures. There's ant people, you know, insectoid type creatures, all inner earth. There are mermaid, merman type creatures in the ocean. Um, those are all the, the government, the military works for all, all of that stuff. 
Um, there are things like, and, and these names, you know, don't quote me. I'm, I'm just describing um, kind of what they are, like goat man, pig man, you know, these, these sort of mutation type creatures that everyone's heard about. They're all real and they all serve a purpose and they're all being hidden by these entities, these black ops, these secret ops groups in the government, in the military. All right. And they're using them for nefarious reasons. So it's that part is what's the most important. I mean, I know people love talking, you know, it's fun, it's it's entertaining, it's scary. That's not why I do this. You know, I have no interest in the telling campfire stories about werewolves and dogmen because they kill people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people a year. Um, and the reason they do that is because our governments have trained them, MK altered them, it altered their minds to become killing machines, super soldiers, right? That's why some of them go wacko and they go and they do bad stuff. You know, it, back in the olden days, that did not happen. These creatures were indigenous. They were guardians of the planet. Um, only until recently have there been a lot of studies of all of these weird creatures that have been harming people. Um, that's why one of the cover-ups is going on. So anyway, yeah. that, that was just kind of like a like a little like a little nutshell of what's important to me and what what we're working on and trying to unify some of these groups that are everywhere. And you know, if I could say one thing is the most important about all of this this movement is unification is the dissolving the egoic activity within the groups. You know, it's my information. You know, I found that. He stole it. You know, this is about teaching people. This is about teaching people who don't know, okay? There are billions of people out there that don't know any of the stuff we know. The only reason we're needing to be doing this is to be educating the people to break out of this control that the cabal has, the control of consciousness and the control of our beliefs by you, that by methods of fear, by social shaming, embarrassment, and worse, much, much worse, because there's so much, there's so much that goes on that has gone on that we don't even talk about. And we, we're not even getting there. We're not even getting there because a lot of times we're arguing about the minutia, you know, whether or not the werewolf has ears that stick up or on top of it, you know, whether or not the tail is three or four feet long, whether or not the fingernails are three or four inches, you know, we, we gotta, we gotta try to get away from that, that me, 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 I'm right. You're wrong. That is what's crucial. So yeah. with that being said, Let's talk some more. Yeah. No, those are all wonderful points because, you know, we, we do focus on the, the small details of the cryptids and just trying to understand the cryptids here. Uh, but it's always good to occasionally come in and look at the big picture, you know, as to how this all fits together in the big scheme of things. And so that's why I love this, having this conversation today, uh, because I do focus, you know, a, one cryptid at a time usually here on this show. And, uh, and really, it's it's first of all, I love it. Okay, I love cryptids, and uh, and I love to get out there and, and hunt for them, and uh, and try to communicate with them and learn all I can. But let's just say our government does know about them, which I do. I I hundred percent. I know they do. Okay, um, if they were just to if they were just to parade them out on a stage and let us know, like, hey, this is real. You know that that top of topographical map for the Air Force that that really does list Sasquatch as a dangerous animal. You know, uh, just admit it. You know, that way, that way we could move past this and we could move up to the next level of evolution with our consciousness, well, they, right? Yes, yes. They don't want that. That's the whole idea. The old government, the cabal, does not want us out of this level of consciousness. Ignorance, fear, shame, grief, 
lack. That is what they must keep us in. The last thing they want to do is enlighten any of us. You understand? That's what this movement is about. The new system of government, the white hats, the alliance, the earth alliance, whatever it is you want to call them, that is the group that are getting rid of the, the people that want to keep us ignorant and scared and enlighten us. There are two separate movements, the new world order, the globalists, those are the cabal, right? And they're doing everything they can to keep the knowledge out of your head, everything they can. And yeah. that's what we got here. We got, the, we got the war of consciousness, the war of knowledge, the war of what is okay to believe. I did a show with Nino. I'm sure a lot of you guys know Nino Rodriguez. Um, he, he's got a big show, 300,000 you know, followers. And, and you know, I, I, he wanted to learn about cryptids. And it, it was so interesting just to see his, his, his belief system working with inside himself. Some of the things I, I said, he believed. Some of them he didn't know. And then some of them he absolutely was not able to believe. Um, his really? inner belief structure is, is still captured to a certain extent. And society tells you, if you believe werewolves can talk, you are an absolute lunatic. There's something wrong with you. See, that is what the cabal has trained the place setters, the gatekeepers, to make sure the scientists, the doctors, if this person says something too nutty, consider them crazy, consider them dangerous, yeah. consider them as not a real part of society. That is all systematically designed and planned over the last hundreds and hundreds of years. And if you don't think it is, unfortunately, you're, you're mistaken. That is a big deal. So, you know, it's, it's the belief system that we have to work on with people. It is the breaking of the box that, that people will not go outside there because it's scary out there. Out there is where all the truth is, kids. In here, yeah. ain't so much. And that's right. So that's why we're out here breaking everybody outside, uh, breaking out of the matrix, basically. And, uh, and you know, and I, and I did make a reference last Thursday night on my show. Um, we were, I was, I remote viewed the, um, the Colorado Bigfoot that was spotted on a train ride. And, uh, and the data suggested that was fake. Okay. Super fake. And, uh, and so we were talking about that. And I, and I remember it, it just reminded me of a, an interview that I, that I saw with a man named Tim Peeler. I called him Tim Pool. I think that's the guy from what Twitter or something. I don't know. I, I got his name wrong. I, I went back and watched that, but it was Tim Peeler. And, uh, and, and he's out of um, North Carolina. He's actually a really smart man. Okay. But of course, whenever we give a Bigfoot sighting report on the news or any kind of media attention uh, goes to like a cryptid report or something, they always pick and, and, and tornadoes. They always pick like the most country person with the most country <laughs> accent. Okay. And this is down the south and wearing overalls, you know, and, uh, why, and, why and, is and that? he does have why a very big southern thing? accent. Well, because it, because it makes everybody think that it's just a bunch of backwoods hillbillies or something uh, that are seeing these things and they're crazy. Okay. And, and exactly. Tim, Tim actually, he's friends with my buddy, Don, who's a nuclear scientist. He's a smart man. OK, and um, and they're they're all they're both very smart and good people. But of course, on the news, it's all over the Internet. And he goes, that Bigfoot had long, beautiful hair. <laughs> you know, and I, I love that. But that's how they stereotype all of us, you know, uh, Bigfooters from stuff like that. It, it's very, very, very systematically done. Billions of dollars are spent in these three letter agencies figuring out exactly where the consciousness of people are, how they think. I mean, to, to an extent that our, our regular scientists and doctors have no concept of the level that these people are able to comprehend. They're able to create things that will literally brainwash regular people. And if they hear it, their belief will automatically go there. Now, that Bigfoot in Colorado, there's like a, I mean, there's like a, a, a company right there that that 
that um, allows people to go and dress up in these elaborate Bigfoot costumes and do these kind of cosplay role play activities there. I mean, it's it was definitely not real. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was a that was a blind target, and so it, look, was, uh, it was full of like impact and stuff. That kind of data, like fake stuff. Whatever question, whatever you or your group wants to know about any of Bigfoot or, you know, the big three or the crawler, just the, let's talk about them. I'm, I'm, did I send you that picture? Okay. That Did I send you that picture of that baby, that baby werewolf that we verified nice. that was real and was uh, found in India? No. Did I send it to you? Well, Here, how did, you how could you not that. send me that? No, no. Send it to me. Let's send it over. Oh, you got it? Oh, I've seen that picture before. That's real? Yes, it is. That picture was verified okay. by Victor, and he says that hold on. is can real. I, can we pull that up? Here, hold on. Let's let's do this. Wait, hold on. Well, That's not going to work. You. Never mind. I, I thought I already okay. did. Yeah, send it to me. We'll try to pull it up on the screen. Here you go. Did you um, text it to me? Yeah. Okay. A real verifiable. So now. how how was this verified? Who who verified this werewolf? Where did this come from? Well, be, because it was um, it was uh, it was found, or it was Jeff Nadolny somehow got a hold of it. I don't know how, but he sent it to Victor, and Victor said, "Yeah, that's absolutely what they look like." He's like, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not in India, so I haven't seen that one, but. You know, he, he's seen thousands and thousands of, of newborn werewolves in his life. And he said, that's a real one. What can I tell you? Okay. I'm going to try to get this uh, over to my... But he said that's, that's one, of the, one of the ones he's... He's almost never seen a picture circulating because that is how tightly the, uh, the, the, the secrecy is. But the thing that's amazing to me is he's in the process... Of, of writing a book and it's been approved with freaking pictures now whether or not it's going to get out i do not know his intention is is to literally blow the lid off of this this topic and pu publish a book with actual living pictures of werewolves and dogmen um okay i hope like he does I said, that happen i hope I hope it does that. Okay, I'm trying to get this uh, sent to over to my uh, email real quick, and we're gonna we're gonna look at this werewolf. Uh, it looks it looks like a baby. Okay, so but how? Okay, so there's so many chimeras. Okay, yeah. and I've talked about this a lot. Chimeras could this be a chimera? Do you think werewolves could be a chimera? Are they like ancient to this planet or what? No, they're 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 a specific breed, just like a gorilla or a black bear. I mean, they're they've been around for. From, from what our cosmic research says, the law of one even speaks about these creatures along with Bigfoot, um, you know, and the law of one states that these creatures have been on planet for approximately 500, 500,000 years. So a half a million years. So they are very, very um, indigenous to the planet, as is Bigfoot, as are dogmen as are a lot of the creatures that live under earth, like the lizard, you know, people um, and, and things of that nature. So to my knowledge that, uh, I mean, we're, because we're talking, there are, there are tens, if not hundreds of thousands of, of these creatures, you know, um, the chimeras, I mean, there's a handful. And keep in mind, this is important to understand that yes, at one time, there were shit tons of these creatures that were created, the hybridized under the deep underground bases, the tunnels, the military bases, the yes. But over the last six, seven, eight years, the, the Alliance, the Earth Alliance, along with other groups, special forces have been cleaning these tunnels to a point where there are very few, if any, of these armies of chimeras still alive. All right, now, 
you can quote me about 95% accuracy on that. Now, is it possible there are pockets or undiscovered? Yes. You know, we don't know there's another dumb down by there or here. Of course. But before okay. any of this shit started, before, before Trump even got done being president, a lot of that stuff was done before any of us even knew before, you know, a lot of it was done. Uh, you know, they, they can't have those, those creatures being let loose on the public because oh, trust man. me, if the cabal had the ability, they would have done it. All right. And there oh, were lots gosh. of them, lots of scary creatures that I don't want to see walking down the street. Yeah. I've heard the same thing. Okay. Cause I've had, you know, guys from the secret space program on my shows, like Daryl James told us about the spider animal hybrid that, that he encountered that ate humans and things like that. So I've heard horror I'm stories. very familiar with that. Yeah. Okay. That, very familiar so, with that particular creature. Um, okay. You know, human spider is had the, the human, the torso of a human from the waist up the waist down was just full on spider. And then it had like arms that were, that had those just giant pinchers, really thick, coarse hair. It had a, a series of between six and eight nice. eyes yes. on the two, two black ones here, and then two more, two more, and maybe two more. Um, huge teeth, just, you know, pretty okay. much the worst thing that you could imagine in your mind. Yes. I was, mean, was spider, I, I'm not scared of spiders, but I don't want to see that Spider Man. I believe his name was Max, if I can remember right. Max, that's right. His name's Max. That's right. There's probably, I think there's probably more than one down there, but yeah, there's one named Max. Okay, the girl in her gong. Thank you so much for that super chat. I appreciate that so much. Okay, now I want to show this picture of the baby werewolf, everybody. Now, if you get squeamish, please just be warned. Now, it looks like a it looks like a baby with like teeth. Before you show it, nipples. before before you show it. Like I said, okay. this this was on Jeff Nadoli's channel. If you guys are interested in dogmen, it's a treasure trove of endless information. The guy uploads about four shows a day. Um, he is the only person that has the whistleblower, Victor Johnson, occasionally on his show. It came from him. It was verified okay. by Victor. So in the world of okay. credit, Please go see Jeff's uh, channel called Dog Men yes. on YouTube. Yes. Okay. So anyway, yeah, go ahead. Okay, here we go. I'm going to show it. Y'all, are y'all ready for this? Okay, I'm going to hide this comment or the, the super. Thank you, the girl in her gong again. I appreciate that. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is, oh, now y'all go with your gut, okay? You don't have to believe everything you see. And I'm not saying this is 100%. It could be, they say this is real though. Okay, so. I'm not going to keep it up there for very long, but it looks like a, a human almost with little nipples, like a dog. So, and pointy ears and hair. So, yep. all right. I'm going to take that down. But Victor all did right. verify that is what the werewolf looks like just shortly really? after it's born. So, oh, notice it wasn't a dog man. That. Does the dog man have the, the German shepherd ears? The werewolf have the, the ears here. Um, and they're much less noticeable and they're much less, they don't have that, you know, huge snout. It's, it's more like a, almost like a, like a Bigfoot and they have been mistaken for Bigfoots. Uh, but it did, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, they've been using these creatures, you know, I mean, they used them a lot in Vietnam uh, basically the werewolves and dogmen as tunnel rats. I think I talked, didn't we talk about that? Um, Jessica? Yes, we did. We did. Yeah. yeah. We, we've talked about the, them being used in, in wartime and um, yeah. uh, during the dog man breeding program show that you and I did. And, um, and absolutely. Yeah. But the, uh, we, the, sheer, the sheer number, I mean, you know, just, just, just so you guys know, and I mean, maybe someone's heard me say this before, but according to Victor recently in the last few months, I don't know how many months, but he says that there's approximately 150,000 werewolves and dogmen in the United States from the program alone that have been released over the years. Because you got to understand, these creatures live between 60, 55, 60, 70 years. That's their really? life expectancy. 
66 years is what he says is exactly their calculated life expectancy, but whatever. Um, so they live a long time. So, you know, once they're trained, programmed, shipped, they're released. That's why the government has so much government land, national forests, national parks. That's where they live. That's where they're stationed. And mm -hmm. stationed they are because they're frequently called into duty. You know, just like imagine a military activity or a military um, uh, practice. I, I wasn't in the military, so I don't know the terms, but they will call certain groups in certain areas all together. They're able to communicate with them via chip and they they have to meet in a certain area. They go through um, military activity, training, practice, and then they, they disperse again. They are called okay, can, into duty for certain reasons. Can I interrupt um, for a second, please? Against, uh, go ahead, Jessica. Go okay, ahead. I don't mean to interrupt you, okay? But I just did a show last week where I was... Uh, assigned, or oh, it was the week before last, uh, the re the blind of uh, a remote viewing target, blind, re blind remote viewing target, a while back, of the Dogman. We call it Dogman Island, and it's in Michigan. Uh, it's called the Grand Isle, or something like that, or Gross Isle, Gross Isle. Okay, and in the data, I was picking up a meeting point for communications for these dogmen. Okay, uh, what they it's just an island off of Gross Isle, Michigan. It's like a little island that has underground tunnels for like where they did prohibition and stuff back in the day. They're utilizing these tunnels, but this a meetup point for all the dogmen, werewolves, whatever they are. I didn't actually pick up on dogman or werewolf, but it, it was some sort well, of government asset uh, that had a, a meetup point there for communications. There's a lot of them. They're they're all over the world. And I'm not even going to talk about the word. They're all over the United States, these meetup points. I mean, every remote location where there aren't people, there are these creatures. They live and, and breed and go and live all through these tunnel systems. The earth is full of them. The earth is very porous. It's very honeycomb-esque. Uh, it's, it's like a, an ant farm. I mean, everybody's seen an ant farm, you know, and, and the top here, and it's all dirt, and it's cut away. And, I mean, all you see is tunnels going every – that's the way the earth is, okay? It's not the way you think it is. Um, and there are different layers. Just God, I mean, okay, if, if you go on Google Earth and really study it, you will notice that about 99% of the planet is relatively uninhabited, okay? Really look at it. You'll have Canada and a city and another city over here. You know, there is so much real estate for these cryptids to live. It is stupid. And that's on the surface alone. Most of them spend a lot of time beneath the surface. Bigfoot, werewolf, I mean, in and out, up and down. So, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to tell you. Not to mention, imagine... The earth is also full of literal cities that are inhabited by beings that you don't know that are there, that have been there for thousands of years. Inner earth beings that look like us, that look similar to us. There are many of those. And, and there are there from groups that have come from the stars, that have come here, that have left. I mean, they're all over the place. There are cities of... of inhabitants in our oceans literally on our ocean floor under bubbles um you know space tech activity our government knows they work with them they visit them they exchange information i mean it's there's so much that's going on that that people don't even have a clue um so that, yeah right Okay. Well, that was a, another show that I did recently. Tyler from Journey to Truth podcast gave me a blind remote viewing target. That turned out to be level 27 below area 51. Uh, according to some testimony that uh, I, a colonel, I forgot his name, uh, gave, uh, talking about he was a liaison with inner earth beings. And it was like giants and stuff were in my data. Okay. So this was all underground. Our, yeah. our military's working with them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. We deal with, okay. uh, 
we deal with about 57 different um, different species of beings, humanoids from different places, okay? Different planets, different parts of the of the cosmos. 51 of them are benign, friendly, helpful, like us, kind of six of them are very not so much. And they've been kind of our enemies over the last, you know, many thousand years. That includes the, you know, the reptilians from Alpha Draconis, the the Nibu, the Grail, the the Mitra. Most of them are the tall grays. They look differently in the face and their bodies are a little different, but they're mostly the tall grays. Alpha, the Zeta Reticuli, they're smaller grays and they're nasty little bastards, but there are only six that we deal with that are bad, whereas there are 51 good ones. And we are very familiar with these groups. We've been working with them for a long time. Um, it, it's just something people simply just don't know. And a lot of them are incapable of getting to that that place in belief. So, but soon, yeah. soon, very soon. Oh, yeah. It's all coming to the surface, I guess you could say. Uh, now, Jojo had a question. I, 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 I'd have to scroll back up to find it. But she was asking, don't werewolves transfer, uh, like humans turn into werewolves and werewolves turn back into humans? What do you no, think of that? Um, they do not. Uh, you know, there are... There are things I don't really study, you know, some of the um, some of the indigenous lore, some of the shape shifting, you know, some of the skinwalker. I do not study that stuff. And I'm not saying it doesn't exist. It's just there's too much out there. But these particular creatures, keep in mind, we named them this. OK, werewolf. They were named that, according to Victor, by Victor's father who started the program in 1952, okay, or four, 1954. And they just named them that, okay? We knew they were there. We found these creatures long, long time ago, right? And we knew of the dog man. We knew of the werewolf. We knew of the Bigfoot. They're different creatures. They look different. They act different. We just named them stuff. Hey, I think that's a werewolf. That's a Bigfoot, you know, but they have other names throughout history, through other indigenous groups. They might have a, a dozen names, but what we're describing is what we're dealing with now. Everyone knows what a Bigfoot is and a dogman. Well, a werewolf just so happens to probably be the smartest of the three, the most elusive. They're known to have... I'm not going to say, you know, you know, they deal with portals and stuff like that, but they're very intelligent. IQ averaging above 100, which is these days more intelligent than the average person. OK, um, they, they have a great sensitivity to technological um, technology. They're able to sense things, vibrations, signals. Like if you have a cell phone and you go out in the woods, they know you're there for miles and miles away. They're able to utilize these abilities to stay hidden. And first and foremost, above all else, that is their goal, to never be seen or interact with humans until, of course, right. these programs came into about. And that threw everything up in the air. Oh. Uh, Leave it to the government to screw everything up, right? But werewolves are, by and large, a little smaller than Bigfoot. Um, they're usually a little more black rather than a brownish brownish red. Um, their face looks similar. Their teeth are much more canine because, see, their genome is a, a, a humanoid that, that has canine DNA, whereas Bigfoot has primate DNA where we have human DNA, where there are other creatures that have rep, uh, rep, reptile DNA. You, you see what I'm saying? But yeah. by and large, in this part of the galaxy, all right, most beings are humanoid. A great number of them look like us to a certain extent. They may have different color eyes or you know, weird hair, or they may be taller or shorter, right? 
Their skin may be a different color. They may be blue. They could be green. They could be red. But they are humanoid. And that is just what goes on in this part of the universe. That's what we found. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't know what else to say. It's not that they're modeling. They, they don't model the human. They were there first, right? We're yeah. very new in in this in this part of the universe. I mean, we've been around kids on the block. You know, yeah. few seventy five thousand years, maybe in our form, in our current form. There's been prior human experiments on this planet. Um, most people don't know that that have been lived, thrived, failed, been wiped out by one thing or another, sometimes by choice, sometimes by just dying out. But we're the fifth, the fifth human experiment, okay, that we started about 75,000 years ago, okay? All of this is very well described in, in, in manuscripts like the Law of One, you know, like the things David Wilcock talks about, Corey Good, Elena Danan. Um, there are many, many, many scholars that all agree on, on, on most of this information. Um, there are many people that have the ability to channel and channel accurately. You know, sure, there's, there are people that fake it, but there are real ones out there, man. I can assure you. And there there's are, also remote viewers, too, that do blind targets that don't know what they're looking at. They've got a set of numbers, and you can't argue with that. I'm just saying. It's, it, it's, it's yeah. a spatial and visual ability. All of us have different abilities. All humans are supposed to be able to have ESP, to have clairvoyance, to be able to communicate telepathically. All of these abilities were taken from us by the cabal over thousands of years. And we're going back to that. And people that can that rem can remote, remote view are simply tapping in to what we call the cosmic web or the Akashic records. Um, and they're, 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 uh, they're able to do and see things that most people can't. You know, some people can just know things. Some people can hear things. Some people can see things. And this ability is coming back. Um, it is because we're waking up to it. Yeah, we're waking up to it. And I'm, and that's why I really enjoy doing my remote viewing shows is because it just opens people up to, I mean, I'm just a regular girl. Okay. I'm just a, a, a mom, you know, uh, just out here having fun doing these shows, but I'm just a regular person. And I, if I can do this stuff, you, you guys can do this stuff too. Okay. You can remote view. It's just a matter of tapping into it. Okay. And becoming aware of our abilities. And once you start Getting like well, interested in like opening up your psychic abilities, yeah. it all comes online. Yeah, well, yes, it it, it it takes discipline. It takes it takes learning, and and to be honest with you, it does take to a certain extent soul progression. Not everyone, yes. uh, Jessica, on the planet is at the same place in their soul progression. We progress from first density entities all the way through a seven density octave, okay, in this part of the universe. It's all been written about. Um, and, and most of the, the top scholars in the world agree upon a lot of it. So we are in the third density trying desperately to go to four. And at that point, that is when this illusion, I mean, everybody's heard about this illusion we live in, right? I mean, for the most part it is, even though it is real, but it's here for our learning purposes. And when we die, we just do it again. But what's important is we have reached the end of the 75,000 year cycle, the cycle that was designed to get us through third density, to get us from basically being an animal, you know, whatever kind of dog, a cat, whatever, second density, we become human. And we have to learn. We have to go through many incarnations, many reincarnations as different people, different places in the world over time. And through these learnings, our soul, our spirituality will progress to a level where we're capable of knowing what we know, doing what we do, right? And after this is over, 
we go to fourth density, which is said to mm, kind of be similar to heaven. Um, you know, not really, but but similar. Our abilities are are a. I mean, we'll be able to live much, much, much longer. Um, there won't be any sickness, any illness, disease. You know, um, it, it's a little complicated for a short period of time, but that's sort of what we're doing right now. That's why it's so important that everyone has an opportunity to choose. You know, do I choose this path? Do I want to ascend? Do I want to be service to self or service to others? And you're mm -hmm. seeing people before your eyes choose. What are they oh, going yeah. to do? Where are they going to go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I know where I, I know where the when the line was drawn in the sand, I know what side I took. OK, because I'm trying to help everybody here and uh, and trying to open people's minds up to all this weird stuff we got going on in this world and bridging, bridging the groups together like you, Nick. OK, um, I do have a, we had a question in the chat and uh, I think it's from Hero and uh, Hero is asking, are you a member of Space Force or do you support because you, you got a Space Force flag, a flag back there. Uh, are you do you work for Space Force or are you just uh, supporting them? Do I work for them officially? Absolutely not. Yeah. Do some yes. of us believe that we have communication from Space Force, from Q, from uh, some of the Ascended Masters? Absolutely. That's all part of this plan. That is what this movement is about. There are groups behind the scenes that have to get certain information to the public through different channels. and. Certain people have different abilities to absorb and to transfer some of this information. So, yes, um, there, there are a group of us that believe that that is part of our mission. You know, um, it, it's a little bit to, it's a little difficult to substantiate. You know, I'm not going to make any great claims, but but I am definitely driven and I know exactly what I'm trying to do and I know exactly why. I'm trying to do it. So that's the best way I can answer that question. And you're doing it for all the right reasons. And uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you wouldn't have had your YouTube channel shut down, what, at least twice, right? I mean, you, you've had all your channels shut down. I mean, you're just speaking the oh, truth had, on a lot of this. I've stuff, had right? bank accounts, let's see, bank accounts, Facebook, Instagram. I've had Cash App shut down, Venmo shut down, PayPal shut down. I've had countless uh, incidents out on the street, wrecks, people trying to crash into me. Uh, I'd say a dozen, at least a dozen out on the street. So, you know, it happens, man. I mean, I, I've lost friends in this battle that got too close to the truth too soon. You know, things are better now. Things are more safe. But year or two or three ago people were people were getting disappeared so um yeah it, it's real it's a real deal so what yeah, else do you want to know before we gotta go give me another topic give me another oh question. my gosh i mean i think we've pretty much covered most of the questions and stuff i mean we've actually come to the end of the hour today and uh, and i was trying to think uh is there anything else because i mean if i ask you a question we could go on for another hour seriously yeah, I know. I know. We so got, we're, we, we may got, just we may just yeah we may have to just uh, pick this back up uh, and on our next show together because I hope you'll come back and uh, and yeah. come hang out with me some more. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that that internet snarfu. I, I don't okay. know what the hell's going on, but hey, but this, like this said, is called yeah. a glitch in the matrix. This is the name of my show, and there's always a glitch. It never goes off without a glitch, and uh, and that's just if, if we're not glitching, we ain't doing it right. Yes, okay, indeed. So, there, there's there's yeah. there's so 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 much that is going on. I mean, we've got we've got cosmic disclosure that is that, that, that I mean, we have governmental and military groups working on this now as we speak, talking about how they're going to be uh, showing people what what crafts are going to be um, deliberately brought into viewing. You know, things of this nature. What being uh, it, it's, there's so much going on that it, it, we could do, we could do a dozen shows and still, 
not even touch it. So uh, I'd be happy to yeah. revisit. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, what I really, I always have fun talking with you about the cryptids that work with our governments and stuff. I mean, that is just some, I think it's really important. I mean, cause I don't think we hear about that enough um, in the cryptid community, on the, in the online cryptid community, you know? Um, so that's, that's yeah, kind of what I, what I, what I look into because I'm so, I'm so concerned with all these national parks and uh, because I do a lot of uh, hiking and camping in these national parks down here in the South. And, uh, and there's, and there's a lot of Bigfoot activity in those national parks. Okay. And there's more than just Bigfoot activity. And it's so important for us to protect ourselves from what's lurking in those woods. Okay. But yeah, the, the, the Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Bigfoot werewolf, you're not going to have any problem whatsoever. But it's it's the dog men. They're the ones that have been trained and have gone haywire. They get very vicious. Um, you know, most of the most of the uh, the people being killed have been killed by these creatures. It's um, it's somewhere recorded about 300 a year, maybe a little more, and that's just the the reported cases. Um, and when I say reported, I don't mean to the news. I mean reported to Victor's three-letter agency uh, special ops arm of it. You know, it goes through, it goes from the park ranger, maybe through to the cops. Then it goes to the, the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources. And from there, the DNR reaches out to like, CIA. And from there, they reach out to victor's specific uh group now like i said he is no longer with them because of the dismantlement of these cabal systems um he is retired um but this earlier this year he was not so um yeah okay interesting stuff man this is fascinating absolutely uh because i do i do i feel deep down there is a connection with our governments and all these cryptids and uh we've, we've just done too much to uncover all this and you know so special thanks to you nick sylvester where mm. where can everybody find you on rumble tell my audience about your show that you do right yeah, now it's, um, it's just called the bridge go to rumble look up the bridge with nick and dylan um, you know, you, you'll find it, it. It comes right up. Um, and, you know, we've done maybe 40 episodes of just strange and unusual information. You know, a lot of times what we'll do, we'll, we'll take a world event and we'll dissect it. And we'll tell you why it's happening, what's really happening, what's behind it, and how it might be attached to something more cosmic or spiritual. And that's sort of what we do. We try to Take what people are seeing and tell them what they're seeing. So, yeah, check it out. I love that. We'd love that. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's fantastic. You guys, please go over to Rumble. Uh, go go uh, follow uh, Nick and Dylan over there uh, on their channel on Rumble. And you guys, I got a channel on Rumble too. In case y'all don't know, I've got like I don't. I mean, I don't have that many followers. It's kind of new. So, but uh, but y'all go over there and uh, follow me yeah, on Rumble. It's, it's, it's like non censored. Right? Rumble's tough to, to get followers. YouTube's a lot easier, but I gave up on that. So this is a new yeah. channel. We've only had it out for not even this whole year. So uh, it's new. And um, yeah, it's different. It's definitely different. It's not your typical, you know, truth or trying to, trying to, you know, scare everybody and the world's coming to end or, you know, this, that, or that. Other. We don't talk about COVID all the time. You know, it, it's a different, yeah. different kind of information. Well, good. Well, good. Uh, yes. Well, awesome. Well, Nick, thank you once again for being here. I mean, you know, I, I was actually going to even ask you about like the, some of the remote viewing targets that I had done that you were verifying with like the Bermuda triangle and the inner interdimensional um, tech glasses, those goggles and stuff. But we're going to, we're going to talk about that next time. How about that? Okay. Anything you awesome. want. Okay, perfect. All right, y'all. Well, please, everybody, come back and see me tomorrow night. I'm going to be on air with Arkeem Ra with the Secret Space Program. He has a fantastic YouTube channel called Disclosure Now. Uh, he tasked me with a blind target, which is actually a cloning facility underground under Davenport, Iowa. And there's so much more to it. There's cryptids down there, including the Blimmies. 
Okay. Uh, so we're going to get really deep into that one tomorrow night. Uh, I'm going to tell y'all, this is going to be one of the best shows for this remote viewing stuff. I, I swear y'all, y'all please tune in. Okay. And uh, yeah. So Nick, thank you so much for being here. I will see you next time. You guys also come see me on Spaced Out Radio this weekend, 10 p.m. Eastern. And I'll see y'all then. Until then, you guys have a great day and y'all stay safe out there. Bye, Nick. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.